For the students is our destiny gotcha. This is how we better IUP and community Hulk talk, bring the culture together It's like community IUP. Conclusively we work together better as one Let's make a change and do it big and get the mission done It's Hulk talk, so make sure that you tell somebody We gotta stay connected, educate everybody It's Hulk talk, hey, hey 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 It's Hulk talk Okay, Philly on top right now. So we're going to fly. Okay, okay. Coming to the victory. Okay. So congratulations to Philly. Like, they deserve that win. Like, it was a good game. They were up there. You know, the Patriots was trying to catch up, but mm -hmm. Philly wasn't having it. They were taking that ring. Okay. okay. To the Patriots. All right. You know what it was hitting for. Okay. okay. We left it on the field. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you feel about the Justin Timberlake halftime show? I thought it was, I thought it was, you know, good actually. Like, mm -hmm. I know a lot of, it was a lot of spectators about this show, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Um, I thought for a one-man show, it was okay. I it was okay. Like he had a lot of, like, different things going on yeah. and stuff, like with the mirrors, a lot of performances. He did. So I felt like for a one-man show, he For a one-man show, yeah. Right, but I did hear, like, you know, people didn't like the, um, Prince, Prince, you know, the Prince little thing. tribute, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, like, well, I know, like, they were arguing for some time. Like, people said they didn't like each other at all. And then Prince, in one interview, said, like, he didn't want, you know, himself while he was dead or something in, like, a performance. And then Justin did that. So. Yeah, like, uh, yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, that's, that's not, but, you can't be messing with the dead. Mm, you no, you dead. cannot, okay? You not one thing to mess around with, mm -hmm. okay? It's really touching. So, right. Yeah, so, yes. Justin, be careful. Be careful. <laughs> and also, it's February, so nice. that means Black History Month, <laughs> and that also means Black Panther. Woo! Yes. Everybody tell us you wait for this I've been movie. waiting. I'm ready Before to go. Even made it. Okay, I'm ready to go. <laughs> this is a predominantly, yes, predominantly black cast. Black okay, cast, we got right. people such as Angela. Okay. Okay, Forrest Whitaker. Okay. Okay, Lapita. Okay. We got Chadwick. Okay. We got everybody. everybody okay, so movie. we lit. Yes. All right, I'm so ready. You dress it up. Oh, you. We going? Okay. I'm gonna have to find me some gold. Some gold some with gold, a dashiki, you know, cause you know we gotta represent. This is a beautiful movie. Like I'm. You know what I'm saying? This, yeah. is, this is us. And then it's, on, it's Black History Month, Black movies, Black excellence. Black you know excellence. Saying? That's all. That's we love that Black on. excellence. That's a lot going on. That's you know a lot. So I'm ready. The movie theater is going to be packed. Right. So other than Black culture, we do is love in the air. Right, son? I I never um, felt that emotion. Ah, she, <laughs> she try, she trying it, y'all. She, she ain't feel no love. Uh, what is that feeling? <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing, I'm playing. You know you felt love though. I guess, yeah. What would you say your like uh, Valentine would be? Um, I would like a nice little helicopter ride around the city. Go out to eat some more nights and just relax in the hotel room. Flower petals, That's your candles. Ideal Valentine's Day, huh? Yeah, what about you? All right, my, I would say my ideal Valentine's would just be something, you know, simple and casual. I don't like too much. I mean, I do too like. Too much? Time I do, yes. I do, <laughs> I do like some expensive things. Oh, yes, but yes. But like yes. on trips and stuff, like, 
and you know, not a, not a lot of times you can always do a lot of those things. Yeah, there's always not a lot of times. So as, as long as the thought counts, mm -hmm, the thought right, does that's count. That's how it goes, and that goes within into my next question, right? Okay. Tay? Yeah. So let's say that you had two Valentines, right? But you had to choose one, mm -hmm. right? So you one Valentine, you had love, but he didn't have too much to yeah. offer, but just enough for like. The flowers, the candy, but not like a car, and no, none of the extravagant type of stuff, right? But then the other guy, all the money, you know, Rick Ross, Diddy, million, okay. balling, you baller, know, money ain't a thing, right? Okay. But the love wasn't there. Okay. Right. So it's like, would you rather the love and just enough, or would you rather everything you can imagine? but no love. Okay. What would mean more to you? What would mean more to me is the first guy. I mean, at least the love is still there. You know, he cares about me, but at the same time, I don't know nobody loves it! <laughs> <laughs> I play at you. This is the, this is the mood right here. <laughs> okay, dude, no, 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 no. all right. <laughs> Fun being single with your friends and That's stuff like right. that. Go out somewhere to eat, you know right. what I'm saying? So yeah, you gotta give them like some some single activities. Some single. There's always a whole bunch of single activities. You know, if you don't got no one, it's all good. Right. Okay, as long as you got your friends to hang out with, like exactly. You know, Valentine's Day. It's just you shouldn't, you know, be settled on one day. You know, showing your love for somebody and buying them and spoiling them with a whole bunch of gifts. It should be like all the time. That's okay. True. So, but like, ladies and gents, if y'all agree with Taylor. If you want the love and not, you know, just enough, or yeah. you want the money and you love, your love can wait. You know love can wait, right? Let what y'all like? Let us know. Yeah. Comment. Let like us, we got, we love to know. Let us know. All right, <laughs> but I guess that's all the time for Tay and Ty. Unfortunately. Unfortunately, y'all know we love y'all. We love yes. you. All right, stay tuned for the next episode. Peace. Tay and Ty goes on tour. <laughs> LA, darling. LA, <laughs> London, <laughs> China, <laughs> Jamaica, Italy, France. Yes, all right, get ready Richard for the James. world tour. The horse is right. Okay, <laughs> giddy up, giddy up, let's go! go. <laughs> hey, everybody, it's Mitch Ayin, I'm on the mic, Ayin. I'm here with lit questions today. I'm gonna walk around today and see if I can get some lit, you know what I'm saying? Lit people on my show, you know what I'm saying? Make sure they're smart enough up here, because you know, you know what I'm saying? People go to class and not really smart. So we gonna get some lip question Ayin for the day Ayin. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the boy Mitch Ayin on the mic Ayin and I got... Chloe Brown, IUP drill team captain. And I got members of Cap Alpha Psy. I got Yang, Akeem, Todd give him help. <laughs> uh, I got my man, Nate, Nathaniel. My man, Trey. First question is, what continent is Europe in? Isn't Europe a continent? Yeah, you got that one. What do you put in a toaster? Uh, Pop tarts. Anything bread can be toasted. <laughs> bread. He said bread. He's the only one that got it right. What? He said bread. You said oh. you said Pop tarts. Yeah. You said what? Yeah, anything. anything. I came from Pop tarts. Bread. All right. All right. All right. All right. Look. I got this toaster, right? And I don't know what to put in it. What do I put in the toaster? What do you put in the toaster? Um, to eat? What do you put in the toaster? Uh, peanut butter. So you're in a one bedroom, a one bedroom house, right? All right. You got a red living room, a white kitchen. What color are the stairs? We don't got no stairs. Got it. Got it. Got it. What's the what's NAACP stand for? National African American Community People. What? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> I know it's for black people. I know it's for black people. That's uh, all I know. Uh, uh, the uh, what's NAACP stand for? African-American. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so we should probably know that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's more advancement for African uh, stain. Yeah. 
don't know that. National Association for being for the color people. Yeah. All right. Your mom lives 100 miles away, right? You're driving 50 miles an hour. How long would it take you to get there? You said, so repeat the question. Your mom lives 100 miles away. You're driving 50 miles an hour. How long would it take you to get there? How long would it take me? <laughs> I don't know. So what state has the biggest population mm -hmm. out of Los Angeles, Chicago, New York, and Las Vegas? I'm going to say New York. You got that one right. How many days are Halloween? How many days are Halloween? One. Days are Halloween? Yeah. One. One. All right, all right. 31? It's on the 31st day? Yeah, it's 31 oh, days. Yeah. I didn't know that. Ah, Thank you, man. Okay, I see what y'all did there. What's the name? What three countries make up North America? United States, Canada. Um, there's only two countries in North America. Say it again. There's only two countries in North America. There's three. There's three. Yeah, so what's the third one? Mexico. Mexico. You no. Know? Mexico. Mexico counts as the U.S. Oh. You heard it right. It? All right. This is what. Wait. Is it? <laughs> All right. So what are you? One for three? Yeah. No, I'm two for three. So I got which, two right. Which ones you get right? I got the first one right and the third one. All right. Okay, are you P? You, you came, you seen, you saw everybody that was lit, you seen who wasn't lit. It's the boy Mitch Ayin. Stay tuned for the next questions of Lit Quest Ayin. My name is Eric Doe. I play safety for IUP football. I'm Devon Barnes. I play guard for IUP football. And you're, and you're watching, watching the big, big hit on IUP TV for all Crimson Hunt coverage. coverages. Hey guys. That's Olivia. That's Tiff. That's Naylin. And each week we're here to bring you the hottest, the latest, the juiciest celebrity, celebrity news. news. Okay, so I'm gonna put Olivia and Naylin in the hot seat real quick. Okay. I'm gonna give you guys a celebrity or a phrase and you give me one word to describe it. Okay. Are you ready? Yes. Let's go. On your mark. Get set. Justin Bieber. Kind hearted. Beyonce. Flawless. <laughs> Kardashians. Overrated. Kanye West. Crazy. <laughs> All right, um, here's a tricky one. e &B. Oh, uh, Tuesday at 10 p.m. What's up, everyone? I'm Nate. I'm Maya. I'm Nigel. I'm Troy. And, and this, this is Cultural Struggle. Struggle. Well, today I'm going to talk about um, a rapper named Jordan Lucas. Um, he has a song out, it's called I'm Not Racist, and this is a quote at the end of the song. Well, I like to say, we were all human until race disconnected us, religion separated us, and wealth classified us. So, my question is to y'all, what do you take off this quote? Okay, so, I take out this quote is, first of all, people will see you, and they'll look at your race, and that's how they classify you, or how you're gonna put your potential in society who you are, what your background is, and that's how they look at you. Um, I think he just addressed um, each so, like each disconnect in our society today mm -hmm. with wealth, race, and what was the third one? Religion. Religion, like that's just every way that society is just di like disconnect disconnected nowadays, and that's, that's what I took out of that quote. Yeah, um, I have a feel on that too. I, I think it's like from like a liberal and conservative perspective, the song. Right, Maybe yeah, what it's about right. and the disconnect, like you said. So, yeah. I would agree with it, the quote. <laughs> I, I think, I agree with all of you guys. <laughs> okay, so, um, what stuck out the most to you out of this video, like? So, what stuck out to me the most of the video was, first of all, the video comes on and you're kind of like confused, like what's going on, but, as you're watching it, you're seeing that it's from two different perspectives. Like you get this guy that it seems like he's about to be really racist, and you get like this guy who probably seems like he's from the hood or something. 
So I'm re I'm watching it and he said something about like we can say in words and songs, but when I say it I'm racist, which I think is like so true because like us in like the black community, we use the N word as like a term of endearment, like bro or something, but we're normalizing it. So like at what point is it gonna be something that's degrading? Like cause it was degrading. So why ha why is that not a thing when we're using it to each other? Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Yeah, because he like basically did you like you thought um the white guy was gonna just be straight up mm -hmm. racist. But also I would thought like the black person wasn't even gonna be educated on things. Yeah. But he actually was. So I understand that. How about you? Yeah, I felt like this is really what the culture needed. Uh I was really surprised that something like this was actually put out. And I really felt like we needed this. Um he attacked a lot of stigmas. Yep. Uh a lot of controversy throughout America right now, and I feel like we really needed this, and I think Jordan Lucas said that. Yeah, I'm thinking. I would I agree to with it. yeah, I would agree with Choi. Um, it was definitely interesting and like kind of eye opening, like because it was two different perspectives. So That's what was, made it so good. Yeah. Like you could look at it from two different right. viewpoints. Right. Right. All right. So how can y'all relate um, his his lyrics to what's going on in society now? How y'all relate to it? I feel like his lyrics is the definition of what's going on in society mm -hmm. today. Every like it's a big disconnect between cultures, uh, presidential, everything right now. So like we needed like like I said, we needed to hear this from somebody. So it's like you're basically saying like he's a voice for the youth. Exactly. And just basically society uh -huh. in general. Because exactly. basically we're past civil rights, but we're living in modern day civil rights right now. Yeah, right. We have so many different disconnects and so many stigmas that we're living in. But I feel like it's it's getting bad. It's getting worse. And another thing he said, he said it's two sides to every story, and I just feel like, like both the sides aren't listening to each other right now, nope. and that's a real big problem right now. And that's just really what he that's was trying to get at. That's the only way something's gonna change is if we come together. You exactly. have to come together. And he was just telling each side of the story. And that's the that's where that's where people get uh, go wrong at because they don't know a side of someone's story and they exactly. judge them based off what they do, but don't really know. With it. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And also at the end of the video, you know, like they even said, like, you know, I see your side and like we should really start like trying to communicate and you know and they like hugged it out at the yeah. end. Yeah, I understand. He he did that as a resolution. Yeah. That's a big like, time. To make people yeah. open their eyes up. Because right. it all it started off really serious and it's like, okay, well, although we have these problems, we need to come together still. So. Right. Because people fear what they don't understand. So Yep, yep. <laughs> True to that. Okay, so um, if you had to pick, which artist would you like him to collab with? Kendrick. I was thinking the same thing. Kendrick. Kendrick. J. Cole, yeah. He's I mean, woke. He's the woke artist. Yeah. He's the one that's already putting out <coughs> messages. He's, you know, perfect. Yeah, I understand that. I, I would definitely agree with Kendrick. Kendrick has some hard lyrics, and it gets two people. J. Exactly. Cole as well. Mm -hmm. J. Cole as well. Okay. I'm gonna say Jay Z. And that's, and oh, that's, that's a good crazy. one. Too. He just dropped yeah. 444, so mm -hmm. I would like to see him do it again. Jay Z has so many like activists, like right, yeah. That's his style, so I think he, they would do a good. Because he's, nice he's off that, he's off that right now. He's trying to make it yeah, change. I definitely, exactly. I definitely respect the new wave, but the new wave doesn't really um, impact. Yeah, it doesn't impact. It just not to the youth, no. Nope. Right. Mm -hmm. They're not trying to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> They're not trying to hear that. Um, uh, would you tell more people to uh, listen to his music? Yeah. Definitely. I still listen to some. Uh, he did a remix to um, Gucci Gang, and he just he, made he yeah. made a, he made it intellectual. It was so crazy. It was like, that went like it was all over. Right. Wow. So yeah, I would definitely recommend them to people. I feel like yeah. he could be a voice for people listen to what they can relate to. So if they can relate to this him rapping, they're gonna listen to it. Like, but okay, wow, he's really saying some real stuff right now. I did, I feel as though like he doesn't have any filter. He just gets straight to right. it. Exactly. And that's what and we, we need. Yeah. We don't need that's a filter. Need. Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't go around the bush and he just says what he wants, speaks his mind. Mm -hmm. And that's what we need in hip hop, honestly. Yep. Anything you wanna add? Nope. All right. Okay, that's it for Cultural Struggle. Open up your mind because your mind is a muscle. Until next time, life's a cultural struggle. struggle. We'll detonate the smokestacks, dissipate my boiling back. A conglomerate of drawbacks got me paralyzed and choking on. Ignite the 
matches of passion. My weekend's gone in a flash, and I just don't know what happened. Send me postcards from where you're staying tonight. Call me up once or twice to let me know you're all right. Pack of empty cigarettes, babe. You're on my mind. I can't forget the sweet, sweet sound of that golden sunset. News. I'm Rachel Oskowski and I'm Taylor Jones. Here's the latest news that's going on around High UP's campus and other current events. The new semester is here which means it's time to get involved. There are many ways to get connected on campus such as clubs, teams, and Greek life. Sorority and fraternity Panhellenic recruitment has begun. This is a great way to meet new people and give back to the community. Available to choose from are 11 on-campus sororities and 12 fraternities. If you're interested, go contact Go Greek at IEP.edu. If you're a graduate student, then you may want to listen to this. There's a third annual thesis competition where you have exactly three minutes to present your original scholarship with the help of one PowerPoint slide. People who are placed will advance to the final round and there will be a cash prize for the winner. The competition is on March 7th in the Hub Allegheny Room, so make sure you sign up. Interested in learning more about cybersecurity? On February 17th at 9 a.m., there will be a free cybersecurity skill improvement workshop for students ranging from middle school to college and teachers. This workshop will be designed to help its audience learn more ways on how to be more secure when dealing with the internet. Head on over to Strite Hall, room 112A, if interested. Here on Hawk Talk, we like to recognize people who work hard on this campus to make it better for the students. Reporter Anaya Pinckney got the chance to talk to Dr. Malika, who works in the Office of Housing, Residential Living, and Dining. Here's the story. Staff members here at IEP mentor students and offer professional connections and guidance. They are the face of IEP excellence, and one of them is Dr. Malika Turner. Once an IEP student, Dr. Malika Turner has faced many obstacles during her academic journey. I I attended IUP um, in 1991, and I would say probably around 1993, I'd gotten to a position where I needed two B's to stay here, and I ended up getting a B and a C. And some friends of mine and some people that I connected with were very encouraging, and they encouraged me to call the professor. So I called the professor at home, and she allowed me to retake the final and I retook the final over the phone, okay? That was after some prayer. <laughs> um, but I retook the final over the phone and she ended up changing the grade to a B. And here I am, I changed my major to communications media. As a staff member for the past 20 years, she's had a first-hand view of IUP's transformation. I have seen a lot of change. I've, I've, I have seen a lot of progress. I will say that one of the biggest things that have changed is the residence halls. A lot of times, you know, students from old remember, the first thing they say is they remember the dorms, um, which we try to use the, the term halls or the suites. And that's one of the biggest things that has changed. Both of my children were born here in Indiana, and when I brought them home, I brought them back home to the Tri Halls. And so now the Tri Halls does not exist, and where we are sitting today is where Tri Halls was. So that's a big change. I've seen people change. I've seen the, the different faculty and staff who have come into IUP and some of the initiatives that we've had that, that really have made a big impact on students. So it's been very interesting to watch some things that have changed, but some things that have stayed the same. And I think because I'm on the, the, the opposite end now, I was a student. I was a graduate student, but now I'm on the side of, of a staff member who has this opportunity to impact the lives of students by making contact with them. I worked in Punxsutawney with students, that population there at the time, and that was so rewarding for me. So things have changed for sure because of the initiatives and the mission of the, of the university, the leadership of the university, but what's really nice is the impact still is still the same. 
right? The impact that, that I feel I can make on students' lives is still the same. Despite her tough journey at IUP, this institution has become a huge part of her success. I absolutely, I mean, beyond a shadow of a doubt, I know that it is because of the people here at IUP that helped me to maintain and help me to thrive here. So even though I told you earlier about um, not getting the grade and technically failing out, you know, it was like you didn't make the grade and so therefore you, you're dismissed. I just, I just moved quick quickly so I didn't get a letter, official letter. But I think it's the people here, the mentorship, the care that I experienced here. And so when the doors of opportunity opened for me to stay here, I was excited about that and I was glad because I wanted to give what was given to me. And that's what that's the difference. Um, I I could I at this point I could work at any institution on the faculty side or on the staff administrative side. But I remain at IUP at this point in my life because I love what IUP gave to me. The seeds IUP, IUP planted in me, the time that was invested in me, and I feel compelled to do the same for the students who are coming into IUP at this point. To get in touch with Dr. Malika Turner, stop by her office Monday through Friday in G37 Reddick Hall. For motivation, follow her on Twitter and Instagram at Dr. Malika Turner. I am Anaya Pinkney reporting for Hawk Talk News. A pseudo event is coming to Indiana. Sunday, February 18th, JCPenney at the Indiana Mall will open up its doors at 5 p.m. to IUP students only. At this event, all business and business casual clothing, shoes, and accessories will be 40% off. There will also be the chance to register to win prizes. To sign up, fill out a student event registrations form at IUP.edu. The Pennsylvania State System Board of Governors have approved a proposal from IUP that will reduce the tuition for regional campus and out-of-state undergraduates. Under this new plan, freshman and sophomore undergraduate students that go to the North Point campus or Punxsutawney would pay $247 per credit compared to the $309 per credit charge. Out-of-state students will be paying $5,377 for 12 credits rather than $9,365. President Driscoll has stated that IUP's per-credit tuition model increases fairness. Students pay for the credits they take. IUP enrolls about 500 out-of-state students. A spring career fair will be making its appearance at the KCAC on February 28th at 10 a.m. Here, students will have the opportunity to explore jobs and internships in criminology, summer employment, government, and public service. This event is open to all employers seeking students from IUP. They will be offering full-time, part-time, seasonal, and internship employment. The 23rd Winter Olympics Games is finally here, and this time it's in South Korea. And this is the first time that South Korea has hosted the Olympics. It started on February 9th, and it will end on the 25th. The Olympics will feature 102 events in 15 sports discipline. The sports include snowboard and ski jumping, bobsleigh, figure skating, curling, and luge. Make sure to watch and cheer on Team USA. Well, that's all the news we have for today. Make sure to catch us on the next episode to see what's happening around IUP's campus. But stay right there. Up next is Hawk Hour. What's up, new guy? Welcome to uh, Press Start. This is the studio where we had a video clean. Uh, we like to have fun here. Uh, it's a show about video games. We like playing video games. We like talking about video games. Uh, we get news about video games. Uh, other things, too. We like to have people in front of the camera, though, to give their opinion. So, everybody's a part of Press Start. Oh, hey, new guy. You're gonna need this. You're up. So, uh, right, Let's get that. All right, good to go. Alright, be quiet. Hey everybody, welcome to Hawk Hour and thank you for joining us tonight. We're your hosts for this evening. I'm Jamaica. I'm Brooke. I'm Anaya. And I'm Caitlin. 
So we're finally back at school and getting adjusted to our new classes. So how do you guys prepare for the new semester? I cry. <laughs> Same. Yeah, Same. 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 The first thing you guys do is cry. Yeah. Just yeah, thinking, and then I thinking about the workload. <laughs> right. But I don't know. I was excited because I felt like it was going to be the first yeah. day of school again because mm -hmm. We're freshmen, so right. well, well I am. Yeah. So, <laughs> but we're freshmen, so it's like exciting because we have to find yeah. the new rooms and everything again. So I was just like preparing myself and where I was gonna go and everything. Yeah. Right. Wow. I took yeah. all these notes from last semester because mm. last semester it was real. Like, yeah. It was. <laughs> it was a that. rude awakening <laughs> for me. Okay, but this semester I feel like I'm on the right track. Like it's just time management. Yes, mm -hmm. it is. It's That's time like time a major key. Yeah. So. And getting all your books before the semester starts. That's Girl, I just ordered yes. two books yes. yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I just ordered two books. You gotta go to check, do not go to the. <laughs> but some store. teachers they check. don't use the books, so I want to yeah, fill out the class first yeah. and yeah. see like. Yeah. Do, are you That's really true. going to make me use these it's books? It's like mm -hmm. requested, but right. not like required. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Right. And then I don't even open it. What was it required for? <laughs> <laughs> so, Valentine's Day is approaching. Yeah. Do you guys believe in the whole love day? Why do we choose one day to show our love for someone mm -hmm. and spoil them with presents, and why don't we just do that every single day? I don't, even, I don't care for Valentine's Day. I'm one of those girls. I personally like, don't either. I don't care for it, I like, I like, I like, I see, I like seeing all the lovey stuff happen, yes. but right. for me, I'm just, I'm just kind of like. I oh, am a hopeless romantic, okay? <laughs> like, I love love. I mm -hmm. love Valentine's Day, but you know, I don't know about this year, but <laughs> next year we rooting for Valentine's yeah, Day. That's how I feel. Then yes, I will. Valentine's yes. Day thing, you know, Do yeah. a little mixing and mingling. Together, <laughs> mingling. You don't have to be single, you have to be alone. Right. <laughs> so, do you guys think that they should spoil you every single day, or why should it just be one day that you're like, I it love you be so much? <laughs> right. yeah. That's yeah. why I don't care for it. Like, all day, every day. <laughs> Well, yeah, I don't know. I feel like every day you should show the person yeah. you're with that you love them. Yeah. But every day you can't afford all of yeah, these I'm extravagant yeah, gifts. So I feel like on Valentine's Day, that's stay. the day. Yeah. On Twitter, they have like these these couples. I don't know where they find these. Yeah. Yeah. They have Louis bags. Yeah. I'm like, where Slay. are they finding these? Slay. 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 So that one day, I wouldn't expect a Louis bag every single day. Mm -hmm. But Valentine's Day, like, I feel like. I appreciate a bowl of cereal. That's extra. No, no, yeah. Like, if you bring me a bowl of cereal, just random. Oh, you are easy Seriously. to please. Like, just bring me <laughs> one <laughs> flower and I will be happy. Oh, yes. like, I'm weird, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so do you guys feel as though Valentine's Day is only for the woman in the relationship, or do the men also expect gifts? I feel like it should be like a mutual thing. Yeah, yeah. I feel like it should be. <laughs> See, I disagree. Thing. What? Really? I really? disagree. I think Valentine's Day is for the woman. Just like your wedding day is the oh, woman. Yeah, no, like, no, 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 no. I feel like Valentine's Day, mm -hmm. like when I've asked people, well, what would you like for Valentine's mm -hmm. Day? Nothing. So yeah, I'm like, like, what do you true. even get a boy for Valentine's Day? Oh, a yeah, box of chocolate. Chocolate? chocolate? Happy do boys eat cologne? chocolate? I don't even do know. Do boys eat chocolate? You can get them like cologne. Um, Cologne's nice. Games, I feel like, they like, to like play yeah, games no, because I don't like them playing them. <laughs> no. You could probably get them a pair of sneakers or a few sneakers. Yeah. yeah. But I would do sneakers for like a birthday or yeah. Christmas or. But I mean, if he's bringing me like a Louis bag, Louis bag, then I should get him some. Yeah, you're right. You know, so a Louis Bell, Louis Bell, like, just keep it up. See, I never knew. No. Do you guys think that your views on Valentine's change, like, based on whether you're with somebody or not, or like, mm -hmm. definitely? No, I don't think they Yeah, I don't. I, I don't think mine change. change because if I'm with someone, then I'm obviously gonna show all my love for them and like, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, Valentine's Day is coming up. I'm so right. excited. But if I'm single, I'm really just like, eh. No, well, no, I, I stay the same. Like, even yeah. if I'm single, I'm single. I still yeah. love love. Like, yeah. I, I don't love. care. Like, <laughs> these know? cute couples on my timeline. <laughs> I know. Girl. I do like seeing that. They so make me so cute. happy. Like, I don't even know half of them. And I'm just like, I'm so <laughs> happy for you guys. Follow them yes. YouTube, follow I'm rooting for you. <laughs> Get their Facebook going. Like, yes, so I'm rooting for all <laughs> couples you to win. Vote. Okay. Yes. I do. I do. <laughs> well, I think we're wrapping up. So mm -hmm. that's all we have for today. Thank you guys mm -hmm. for watching. If you guys want to discuss anything that we've talked about, please tweet us at IUP Hawk Talk. See you later. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you bye. bye. <laughs>
Hey guys, I'm Haley. I'm Kane. Hi, I'm Haley, and you're watching Witticism. You're watching Witticism. And you're watching Witticism. Today I have with me here Hawk Talk's very own Silver. Everybody welcome Silver. All right, Silver, so we both attend the Winter Blast, and you're also in a modeling troupe called Damage. And you guys performed at Winter Blast. How do you think you guys did? Um, for this new generation of dolls, I think they did pretty good. Okay. Um, most of the girls aren't used to being out in front of everybody, and some of the girls are still being used to like being built into models. So. It was like a little runner's course to see how they will interact with the crowd and how to entertain the crowd, and I think they did pretty good. Mm, that's great. Any favorite part of Winter Blast? Any like particular things you liked about that day? Yes, indeed. Um, I would say my most favorite part was seeing Militia come back. I'm so happy to see Militia's mm -hmm. back on IUP campus. They're such a beautiful organization, and I just love when they perform. With like militia, poise, and damage, what would you say like the difference is between the, the three? Because you know, you get a lot of sometimes people think they're like similarities and stuff like that. What would you say is different between damage, poise, and militia? Um, the difference between the two, the three is that damage isn't a dance group. Mm -hmm. We are strictly a modeling troupe. Mm -hmm. We do some performances, but we mainly focus on just the mission of promoting fashion. Right. Okay. Um, militia is a hip hop dance group and Poise is a mixture of both of a dance organization and a modeling troupe. Okay, other than the organizations that you're in, is there any particular that you like at Winter Blast or even in like school in general? Um, particular organizations just out. Mm -hmm. um, I would have to go with like seeing the fashion department mm -hmm. and the Haven Project. Mm -hmm. um, they're an organization that's about community service mm -hmm. and bringing service to, to the IUP campus. Right. I feel like that, that's lit. So, you know, we heard on the streets and stuff like that around campus that you and the IOTAs is having a wild and out. <laughs> Why did y'all pick this type of an event? Oh, okay. So, um, it's actually pretty funny because the IOTAs always want to do an event right. like this. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, this event idea actually came from my VP and mm -hmm. my treasurer, Kaylin and Star. Right. And they wanted to do a wild and out theme like at IUP. Right. And it just so happened that the IOTAs had the same idea. So mm -hmm. we clashed. And also one of the IOTA men is also part of Damage Modeling Troop. Okay. So right. it was easy to interact. Right. I think that's that's good to pit them two organizations together and, and create magic, right? Yeah. So what can people expect coming to your show and stuff like that uh, while well, and now? Well, you're not going to expect Nick Cannon, <laughs> but... <laughs> Right. Um, we're just taking strictly the theme of it. So you bring your team, mm -hmm. you go head to head with another team, whoever got the flyest jokes, whoever could roast the hardest, you know, and it's a two hundred dollar prize and a trophy. <laughs> All right. Well, y'all here first. <laughs> if you think you got it, make sure y'all check that out. All right. So we gotta talk about this silver because you know we we the two talking cameras and you know we heard this <laughs> one on campus, right? So we got PNB Rockets coming to IUP, right? Are you excited about that, first yes, of all? Yes, I'm so excited for PNB Rockets to be coming to campus. Right, okay. All right. So what's your favorite song by him? Right now is Faces. Okay. Okay, I'm I sorry, like but yes, it's a freak song, but <laughs> I like it. <laughs> and did you get your tickets? No, I did not. And I'm going to tell you why. why? I'm going to tell you why, because Static yes, decided, static. and I'm sorry, there. I had to put y'all on blast, <laughs> but Static decided because Clearly, nobody did their research on this major artist because he is a signed artist right. to put him in the Hub Ohio room. I was just getting to that. Like, why do you think they put him in the Hub Ohio room? Like, um, because they didn't clearly do the research on this man. He is pretty big, and right. if y'all didn't think he could sell over five thousand tickets, he can sell out yeah. over five thousand yeah, tickets. I feel like he wore raw artist. I feel like a lot of people know him. You know what I'm saying? Like that. We just had a little Uzi in the um. What is it in the uh, KCAC? Why not PNB? Right, out? two two big Philly people, <laughs> man. Two big Philly artists. Right, I, I don't get that. Well, if y'all, we're just confused of why he, why they put him in the Ohio room. If y'all know, let us know, okay? So I don't know why, but so what's upcoming for the Damage Dolls? Um, on Valentine's Day, it is our second annual Valentine's Day mix and mangle, very grand like theme. 
and we're preparing for that now. And it has some, some small performances, you know, <laughs> but it's also a mix and mingle. And it's basically to bring the campus together on Valentine's Day because it's okay to be like single on campus. Right. Why not? You know, why not? You, you know don't have to like be all lovey dovey and everything. And mm -hmm. that's what the event is about for people who didn't have Valentine's Day, like mm -hmm. Valentine's dates on um, on this day. Right. I feel like that's that's well said. You know, yeah. if you ain't got a Valentine, make sure y'all check out. Check it out, y'all. So I do know that you're in a lot of organizations, like you holding down Hulk Talk, damaged out school students, you know, working the side. I'm How excited. is holding all of this stuff together? Like, do you have any advice to like somebody that has like a, you know, somewhat of the same like life like yours and stuff like that? It's all about prioritizing mm -hmm. and setting your boundaries because you don't want to overwhelm yourself with too much. But a person like me, I like to be involved. I, mm -hmm. like to, I like to help people. I like to work around people. Right. So it's all about prioritizing your day, mm -hmm. trying to find a schedule that works with both. Like if you do work, if you work off campus, your, your job schedule, your classes, and also right. your free time outside of that. Mm -hmm. So it's mainly about just prioritizing in an a organized way. All right. I feel like that's well said. All right, I, I just want to thank Silver. It's been fun having you on the show. And if you guys wanted to catch some extended clips from the Winter Blast and some more clips from that, make sure y'all check out at IUP Hulk Talk. And that's the T Top signing off. We need an idea. So let's go through some things. How about a group of kids that hunt for ghosts? Before we jump in, talk about the master's program, you want to talk, talk a little bit about your career in media. Okay. I came to IUP from uh, Kentucky. I worked uh, at a couple different TV stations and a couple of different radio stations when I was um, doing graduate work at Morehead State University in Kentucky. I worked as a news writer and reporter at a television station in Lexington, Kentucky, and then I came here in 1986. And I got hired here primarily because of my radio background, because at the time they needed someone to supervise WIUP-FM. So I was, um, I was the faculty advisor, like Dr. Stigler is now, I was a faculty advisor for the radio station, and I taught courses. And the courses I taught back then were things like broadcast news writing and broadcast management, because that's what my professional background had been in. So I came here from Kentucky and been here now 32 years. Tell us a bit about aspects of your career that you would just like for us to know about. I think students generally think that all we do is teach classes. And with any faculty member, you have so many other responsibilities. As department chair, my role is a little bit different than if I was full-time teaching. But meetings, I go to meetings all the time, and not all of them are that productive. Sometimes I look at the clock and go, well, that was an hour and a half of my life. I'll never get back. <laughs> um, but, um, and you have a lot of interaction with people across the university, and it's a great, it's a, being involved in other organizations outside the department, whether it's a committee or something like that, gives you opportunities to, to talk a lot to other people. I think the thing that I would hope that our students in communications media know about our department and my job is how much we like each other. I mean, I hope that's apparent to students because we as a department get along really well. All of our colleagues, we work together really well. We like to get things done. People are super cooperative. When I send out an email asking somebody, you know, can somebody go to this thing or can somebody do this or can somebody be here, everybody just chips in and does it. And, and it's a really nice atmosphere to work in. So talking about Kentucky and you being a news writer and a radio person, so can you tell us a little bit about, you know, one of your favorite experiences or most memorable experiences doing reporting? And So the most memorable ones are not necessarily pretty stories, unfortunately. Um, when you're a news reporter, you end up doing things that 
I mean, you watch the news. There, are, most of the stories you see on the news are about bad things happening to people, and so I've been to the scene of accidents where people died in accidents. I've been to scenes of drownings. I've been to fires, and so those are not things that are a lot of fun to to do. And and part of that was why I decided not to pursue that as a full time career. I mean, if you look at the news just even yesterday with the shooting down in Florida, I mean, imagine being a news reporter on the ground at that story and trying to tell what happened, but at the same time be sympathetic to the fact that 17 people got killed. You know, so that's tough. That's tough to do, and you have to you have to be able to balance the the urgency of wanting to get that story told with the reality of the fact that 17 people are dead. So it's that's a difficult balance in life. So speaking of that, helping us get our goals and helping us get our degrees and such, uh, you actually have to tell us about this new Communications Media Master's program that we have okay. going on here. What does that entail? So the program is a Master of Science in Strategic Communication. And Strategic Communication is um, communication with a strategic purpose. So the kinds of things that strategic communicators do, they would write annual reports or um, strategic plans or corporate planning, crisis communication plans. So it has elements of a lot of different kinds of communication. So it's very, it's much more specific than a lot of programs. If you look at programs at some of the other um, universities, you'll see a Master of Arts in Communications, which is very general. It's, it's got a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Ours is very specific. So the courses are things like writing for strategic communication, strategic communication theory, then we'll have persuasion, crisis communication, health communication, political communication. If you look for jobs under this category, you'll see a lot of jobs in health communication. So for example, what's happening is medical companies, hospitals, doctor's offices, drug companies are trying to figure out how do we tell the regular consumer what we do in a language that they can understand. So you take all this you know, stuff about a, a drug and all the interactions and all the side effects and people are like, it just kind of shh. But how do you tell that to them in the way that they can get it and understand what it means to them? And that's what strategic communicators do. We have several people who graduated out of our bachelor's program and the other program that we used to be involved in, which was adult education and communications technology, who do this. They're digital media managers or strategic communication managers for places like UPMC and Highmark and University of Pittsburgh and Carnegie Mellon and things like that. And so that's what they do. They help develop messages to promote their institution in a very specific way. So we're really excited about it. We're taking applications. Uh, we've got people already applying to it. Um, students will take a course in the summer that's a graduate research course because with any master's degree there's research components. So people a lot of times think, well I'll get my master's degree and I'll do more production. That's not typical for a master's degree. A master's degree you usually do some research. We've got two tracks though. We have an applied track which does have more production. So you, in the applied track you would take an advanced production course and an internship. In the research track, you would take an advanced research course and do a thesis. So our hope is that the people who go the thesis route will also be interested in going on into our PhD program. Nice. What about um, students um, already applying? Where can students get this information to apply or come in their future? It's all online. The easiest place is to go to the communications media website on iup.edu. You can search for strategic communication or communications media and then just click on the links for our graduate program. And it's MS in strategic communication, all the application information, the courses, the course descriptions, you know, the intent of the program, the description of the program, that's all there on the website. It's the easiest place to look for that. And can you tell us the general length of how long these programs last? If you're really assertive and you want to do it, you can do it in a, a little over a calendar year. So you could start in summer of 18 and graduate in summer of 19. That's, That's great. great. But you would have to you have to really be on it because you take four classes in the fall, a winter term class, four classes in the spring, and your summer internship or thesis. So it, it's aggressive, but it can be done. And the, again, the hope is there that we can help you get an internship that will land a job or finish your thesis and go straight into our PhD program. Okay. So um, 
what is some things, um, some advice that you can give a student that's like thinking about master's programs as we, all this new information is along to us now? Well, there's several things. One is just, you know, do you need a master's degree to do what you want to do? You know, a person who wants to go be a news reporter or, um, you know, a producer in a TV station or a produce media, maybe doesn't need a master's degree. So that's the first thing. How does it help you reach your goals? If you want to get into management, if you want to be um, you know, a manager of an organization or you want to um, be in corporate communication, then that's the kind of program that will help you. Most people who get into mid-level and upper-level management positions within a company a lot of them have a master's degree. So that would be the first thing. And then, you know, is this the program that's right for you? Does this help you get where you want to go? Um, do you have aspirations to get a PhD and go and maybe become a college professor somewhere down the road? Um, and if you do, then that makes sense because you, to be a college professor, you pretty much have to have a PhD in today's world. So if you want to go, or if you want to work in government as a government researcher, you know, kind of that high-end um, uh, data analysis, those kind of people have, a lot of those folks have PhDs as well. Okay. Well, sounds good. Thank you so much for taking this time to sit down and talk with us, and also to make up such an interesting program that can benefit communications media students like ourselves. Well, yeah. we're super excited about it. We really are. And I'm honestly excited about it, too. Yeah, we, we really think it's going to be a great program for students great program for the department. It's going to provide, you know, opportunities for, you know, graduate assistantships for folks to be more engaged in the other things that we do. You heard it here first, guys, at Teacher's, Teacher's Corner. Corner. Yay! Hey everybody, it's Brooke, and I'm here to let you know some upcoming events in February. Would you like free lunch? Well, on the February 21st, there's going to be a lunch hour that's open to everybody. It will be in the Blue Room in the Sutton Hall from 12 to 2 p.m. Make sure you get there. On February 22nd, there will be a free hugs project by Ken E. Wadaki Jr., who is the top nation's motivational speaker for college universities. It's free, and it will be in the Hub Ohio Room. On February 24th, the IUP NAACP will be having their very first Image Awards, and it will be in the Hub Ohio Room. Doors open at 6 p.m. and the show will start at 6.30. Tickets are $4. And make sure you dress to impress. There will be food and Taylor and Tyrone will be hosting, so you really don't want to miss this. If you're in the theater, then you'll want to see the play Wolves on February 25th, 2018. The play will be performing at Waller Hall main stage from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. Tickets are $12 for iCard holders and $15 to the public. On February 28th, the group Maine will be performing in the Hub Ohio room at 7 p.m. It'll be $10 for iCloud holders and $20 for the public, so make sure you get your tickets. And that's all the events I have for now, so make sure to watch our next episode to stay updated on everything that's happening at IUP. We'll see you next time. What's, What's up, y'all? So this segment of the show is called What's, What's in, in My, my Mouth. mouth? <laughs> Ew! Mm. <laughs> Trash can to your what? In the middle. In the middle. Hmm? Yeah. Ew, 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 ew. Oh my gosh, my eyes are watering. <sighs> mm. This is so sour. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Ew, I don't Here. like this. You want, is that, do you have it? Oh no, I, I ate it. <laughs> oh. Yeah, no, I don't I'm gonna good. say this is like ranch dressing with like chunkies in it. But like I like ranch dressing, I didn't like that. Yeah, that didn't really taste exactly like ranch. <laughs> Something like mixed with may mayo. Could it be ranch and mayo? <laughs> Where is it at? <laughs> oh. 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 What the hell is that? That's is that like honey mustard? Well, here. Is that? Do you think that was honey mustard? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Is it honey mustard? No, it's it's dressing. It's ugh. I need mean, some water. <laughs> that was really disgusting. Okay, it's not spicy. No, it's a type of dressing. It's not balsamic. <laughs> Is it that French stuff? Yeah, yep. French. Is it French dressing? French dressing. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> Get it. High five. <laughs> Where's your hand? I'm I don't know. <laughs> there you go. Stop. She, she, she tried to be like Taylor, take a teeny bit.
It has pickles in it. Or something. No, it's onion. <laughs> it's a thousand Allen dress. <laughs> Basically. No, mine is ranch. No, mine is ranch, I feel like. What's your final answer? Wait. Thousand Island. It was thousand dollars. It was thousand dollars. It was? I think it was that. Oh my god. Hey. What the f? Oh! oh. Uh, it's relish, Catalina. It's mayonnaise. Am I right or am I wrong? Is it Catalina? It's relish. It is relish. It's like. I don't know what it looks like. Is it, it, it do got like they little. It's ketchup. Ketchup is in it. Yeah. My heart started racing. Mmm, you some nasty stuff. Italian this dressing? This ranch dressing, bro. This ranch dressing, Italian, nope. it's one of them nope. Jones. Wait, wait, we ain't we done our fire. No, that's ain't our fire. No, 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 no. no. You get, yeah. It's some type of dressing. More. No, I don't want to. I don't want to more. I don't want more. Actually, mm -hmm. come here, just a little bit, just a little bit. Yeah, you like that? Uh-uh, just a little bit, I got it. Come on. Dang, that's the uh, that's the stuff that be in the white packets. What? It be when you uh, yeah. it used to be in lunch. See either. It's dressing though. It's some type. Oh, that's the uh, joint you put on the solid. That's the solid dressing. What solid dressing? Um, yeah, I don't think that's the orange one. Is it the orange one? French. I think it's French dressing. Let's go French ding, dressing. Ding ding ding. She got you need. She, that's what we going with. One. <laughs> Wait, what the f is that? Wait, I can't cuss. Okay. Oh, wait, wait, what is that? Hold on. I know it's Thousand Island. Let me taste it. Let me taste it. Let me taste it. Thousand Island. Let me taste it. Let me taste it. I don't know what he said yet. I don't know what he said. Thousand Island. All right, let me taste it. Let me taste it. All right. I can taste that. Keep that up in there. Let me taste it. Let me taste it. Keep that up in there. That's Thousand Island, baby. What is that? Y'all got some solid, baby. 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 So we gotta converse about this right now. Mm. This joint tastes like throw up. Um, I feel like this ketchup. Not ketchup, it can't be ketchup. Yo, this is definitely ketchup. Ketchup, have you ever had ketchup? <laughs> That's something else, y'all mix this with something. Bro, they probably mixed it with something, but I feel it's definitely ketchup. Like it's like ketchup. ketchup and like relish or something. It Catch might be like. Relish. That's what I was thinking of, it was relish. Can it be two things? Okay, it can't be two things. It might just be relish. No, that's not relish. It's not ketchup for sure. Relish is sweet. That's what, that, that was like spicy. I don't know. I don't know. It was not ketchup you though. Go with? <laughs> we gotta go with. I say ketchup. <laughs> Okay, we gonna say ketchup because I cannot think of it, but I know it's not ketchup. Are you right. serious? We gotta say ketchup for real? Yeah. Okay, we'll say ketchup. You can get the next one. Okay. <laughs> oh my God. What? Oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> Like the texture of that one, it was like big and round and like Felt really like slimy. Felt like a hot dog. I don't know. An uncooked hot dog. Yeah. But I'm gonna say tuna. No, I'm not. Uh -uh. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> is that a hot dog? Yeah. Was that a hot dog? Ew. It smells like just dog food. <laughs> that was not a hot dog, was it? Oh my god, I'm scared. Is what that like that spam that? stuff? What is this? I don't know what that is. <laughs> here, 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 here. Wow. You gonna try it? I don't know. Are, are you done with the video? I'm getting <laughs> this so <laughs> gross. 
It's a Vienna sausage. Yep, yep. A lot. Oh, you know that's a guy never heard of one. All right, I don't even, just stop playing with me. Like, I make cheese in my dorm. One. What? What the? What the? What the? What the? It's a hot dog? What? It's a hot dog. It's a, I mean, that is definitely. That's a Vienna sausage. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's a little nasty Vienna sausage. It's a salchicha. <laughs> a salchicha. <laughs> mm. Mm. That's well mm -hmm. I don't want to eat this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to him. Bro. Oh my god. But, um, it's relish. Yeah, that's relish. Really? <laughs> relish? Relish. Mm. It's definitely relish. Definitely. I don't like relish. But nah. Well, relish. Relish, yep. Oh. Oh. I got this! Relish! 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 But a weird kind. No, no, no. But they taste like ketchup. <laughs> that tastes. Like I know what this is. I know what this is. That tastes like. It's um, it's um a vegetable dressing. Yeah. It's a vegetable dressing. What are those dressing? Oh, Ooh, that was mm. disgusting. Yeah. Uh, Ugh, I couldn't even swish it around. The name. To of taste that. it. Um. I don't know what it's oh called. Oh god! Wow. But it's stuff that you dip your carrots and your celery in. Ooh. And ooh, it was ooh. rough. What is that called? Um. I don't know the name, so that's Nothing all I'm saying. Nothing is coming to mind right now. I just, the taste is just lingering. I don't know. Um, that's my final guess. That dip that you put your vegetables in. Dip. <laughs> Ew. Not okay. Ew. What, what the, the freak hell is that? Is that? <laughs> There's no way I'm guessing that. Ew. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I need some water. <laughs> I need to be done with this game. What? Hold up. This is ranch. No, it's blue cheese. Mm. Okay. Mmm. Mmm. This is like cheap blue cheese, though. What the? This is ranch. No, this, this is, is blue, blue cheese. cheese. Blue cheese. Ranch! <laughs> well, it's easy to take all. You gotta take all of it. Here. Just take it in. You don't even know what it is. That's blue cheese! Wait, is it blue cheese? Or That's blue cheese! It's right. blue cheese or ranch? It's blue cheese. Blue cheese! Oh, yeah, blue cheese. Blue cheese! I said ranch! You can't miss the ball out too blood! I thought I put my wings, Buffalo wings, bruh! Mm. Mm. That's gross. Mm. That's um something cheesy mixed with cream and white stuff like a. Uh, I'm gonna keep it a beam. I do not know what the hell it is. That's nasty. That's what it's I like. I don't know what was that. Yo, you eat sour cream ever? You ever eat sour cream? I don't ever eat sour cream. It don't taste like sour cream. Though. That's something else. That's like. I think that's like a dressing. Yeah, blue cheese dressing, that's what it is. Blue cheese dressing, facts. All right, well, I'll go with her on that Yeah, one. that's for sure, some craft, something, <laughs> something nasty. Can I take these off now? All right, well, that's it for Culture Struggle, you know? 
Okay, that's it for Coach Struggle, Opie and Mom, because your mind is a muscle. Until next time, it's life is the Coach of Struggle. Talk, bring the culture together, it's like community. Completely we work together better as one. Let's make a team to do it big and get the mission done. Talk, 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 Spontaneous date, right? Right. <laughs> Speed dating or something. Ooh, you call me a bull. He Darius, why you walking so um, aggressively? Oh, we started. How could you see? Yeah, I felt it. Camera rolling. Oh.